Happy Easter to everyone. As you all know, the Easter celebration lasts for 50 days. So it's not ended. Don't think that Easter was, is, is, has ended. We're still in it. It was just last weekend that we celebrated the culmination of Jesus' passion when he died on the cross and then resurrected. And the joy filled the whole world because of the resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ. This weekend, we are beginning to see the effect of the resurrection. Resurrection of Jesus Christ is one thing, and what is the result of that? We've seen that from the life of the followers of Jesus, the apostles. The first reading made it clear that after the resurrection, the followers, the apostles, started going out to do what Jesus did and what he wanted them to do. And as they were doing that, many more people were attracted to the fold. Many more people, they want more souls. Their numbers started increasing because the effect of the resurrection touched the apostles. It touched them very well, and they felt that the spirit has come to them, and that spirit of courage helped them to go out in the world to proclaim the good news. That's exactly what Jesus, you know, when he was talking to the people in the gospel today, he breathed on them and said, receive the Holy Spirit. Receive the Holy Spirit. What does the Holy Spirit do to us as Christians? The Holy Spirit inspires us. It gives us courage. It gives us the words that we can use to do good things for God. So that's why Jesus told them the receiving of the Holy Spirit is not only to forgive sins, but also to do wonders, to do the work of God. If you can remember in the, in the gospel today, that statement, receive the Holy Spirit, came three times. Receive the Holy Spirit. Jesus was making that emphasis because he wanted the people to have that spirit that spirit of resurrection of our Savior, the spirit that can inspire us to go and do good works. And we heard that they received it, the apostles received it, and they went about doing good. They went about providing healing for people. Those who are sick received the healing because they prayed over them. Those who are in need of any maybe counseling, they were able to provide it for them. Those who are in need of one thing or the other, the apostles inspired them and were able to receive these blessings because they allowed the effect or the result of the resurrection to touch them. My dear friends, uh, last weekend or uh, before, uh, before Holy Week, all our ministers were very busy getting things ready for the celebration of the Holy Week and, and Easter. Everybody was, was involved. Parishioners were also involved because we are all doing your penance, doing everything, preparing yourself for the culmination of our celebration. But as you know, this Easter celebration is not the end of it all. We don't go on retirement, or we don't go on vacation after Easter Sunday. Amen? As far as you are in this Christ business, if I may use that word, Christ business. There's no vacation. The only time you go on vacation is when you go to the other side. <laughs> and nobody wants to go to the other side. <laughs> so this is time for us to put into action what we have learned from Jesus. What he has asked us to do. Why he, why he breathed on the apostles, why he gave them the Holy Spirit. It's for us to use that spirit to do good works for God. It will never end. 
It's not, a, it's not, it's not a, 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 a something that will end within a day. And I want to lift off from the gospel what I can see as what Jesus, you know, somehow is encouraging all of us to get involved in. This weekend, we celebrate the Divine Mercy Sunday. Divine Mercy Sunday is a time that we recall how wonderful God has always been to all of us. It's a time that we recall how merciful God has been, how kind he has always been. And his, his kindness somehow is very exceptional, very exceptional in the sense that where we don't expect his love and his kindness to, to flourish, where we don't expect that to happen, there Jesus and God come into it and show that love and mercy. Look at how he selected his followers, selected his apostles. Jesus was very deliberate in selecting his apostles. He did not select apostles that were angels. Look at the St. Thomas that we heard about in the Bible today. He was very skeptical about Jesus. He was even skeptical about the resurrection. So if we were to use in our own human expression or thinking, we would say that he was not a wonderful Christian because he was not there. When he was told that Jesus resurrected, he was doubting that. But Jesus did not dismiss him because he knows that there is a need for that to happen because if someone is in doubt of the resurrection, what is our work, what is our duty to do? Our role is to find a way to teach, find a way to bring that very person in the fold. That was exactly what Jesus did. Jesus did not say, well, you are, you are no longer a member of the apostles. Rather, he found a way to bring him back to the fold. So, and if you look at also other apostles, they have their own issues. Judas is Carol, for instance, was the one that betrayed Jesus. He wasn't a wonderful person in that character. But Jesus did not dismiss him. We never heard that Jesus dismissed him. He dined with everybody. That's divine mercy. His mercy and kindness endures forever. He does not exclude anyone. He wants everybody to come in and show that love and kindness to everyone. And that's exactly what we are called, my dear friends. Whenever we celebrate no, Divine Mercy Sunday. Let us imitate our Savior in his way of showing mercy and kindness. Jesus doesn't only dine. The Bible reminds us that he was even dining with the sinners, the tax collectors, those who were somehow regarded in the society as not the best of people. And those are the people that Jesus went to dine with because of the divine mercy and divine kindness. We are being challenged, my dear friends, this weekend to imitate our Savior, especially in those areas that we think is impossible. Those areas of kindness, areas that we expect to show mercy and we think that is humanly impossible, we can pray that God will inspire us and we will be able to show that same love, same kindness to everybody because Jesus himself showed it to all of us. I strongly believe that he allowed different kinds of people, different personality, to, to be members of the apostles. Because when you have different personalities, different characters together, we learn from one another. We encourage one another. We learn from different people. But if everybody just the same way, I think the church will be so boring. And that's probably why God doesn't want it that way. We has, we ha, he brought it so that we have diversity of opinion, diversity of uh, character, and that makes us to know the best way to, uh, to live our life. Let's pray, my dear friends, in this Mass, that God will continue to inspire us to not only believe in a resurrection, but also use the spirit of resurrection in the life we live in the society. Amen.